Right, moving on then. Um, we have uh, taken some time to uh, do some uh, rearrangement in this project and the reason for that is because we we uh, we want to we want to add our hero character and then group stuff a little bit better. This is something that happens a lot when you make games that you you, you start with an idea and and uh, you start working and things change all along and suddenly you realize that oh all these files they should really be in a folder by themselves and all these files should should belong together so that happens a lot and default uh, helps you by keeping the integrity of the project intact all the time so there is no danger in just taking a file if i want to move this ground collection file to another place here i can do that i just drag and drop and it will automatically solve uh, all the dependencies within these files so it's, it's really simple and, and really nice to be able to to like wor work with your product in this way it's, it's kind of like a plastic uh, or moldable thing that that you're encouraged to actually change uh, so what we did here was that we uh, took all the level stuff and put them in in a, in a level folder here where we have the ground collection just as before uh, and we also created a level collection uh, and in that level collection we have the ground as before the, the one that contains all the ground pieces and the controller that did the scrolling we also add a hero here a hero game of it and this is a little bit different uh, than, than the ground pieces because this one uh, if you look at all these ground pieces this game of they don't live in files they live directly in this in this collection that's fine and that works well for for simple stuff but sometimes it's it's nice to be able to to break things into separate files and you, you gain some interesting properties when doing that like the hero game of this is a separate file it's just a regular game object it has um, instead of we don't have a sprite but but something that is called a spine model a spine model is a, sort of a sprite but instead of just being a static image or a flipbook animation uh, it picks pieces from from an atlas like this one we have imported uh, all these body parts um, into an atlas uh, they reside here in the image folder here for the hero uh, and they uh, the spine model arranges these body parts according to a skeleton you can see the green lines here that that make up the skeleton and the the benefit of that is that we we can get really smooth animations it's like clip book or clip doll animation sort of uh, and you get really smooth and nice animation very cheaply because each frame doesn't cost more than than just uh, how much these move bones has moved uh, so we have a spine model. We also have a script like before that controls this uh, this character. We're going to look closer at that in a second. And there's also a collision object. And the collision object is a physics object that that uh, contains, in this case, two shapes. We have this uh, box shape here and also a spherical shape up here that covers the head. And those two shapes make out this collision object. And we have call this uh, hero here in group hero and it masks or collides with geometry which is another group of, of uh, physics that we also have created and the geometry physics actually sits in we did one addition to the ground collection here and that is we added uh, physics here you can see that in the background it actually sits in the controller uh, game object it could be a separate game of it, but we just put it here for convenience. And there's a box shape here. And you can see that in the background here if I move it around like that. Uh, that makes out this collision object. And this is a static physics shape or physics object that has the group geometry and it collides with hero. And what this allows us to do is to... Uh, let me close this. No, I don't want to save. If I look at the hero script, um, it will. It, it, it's very long. We're gonna look look a bit closer to this in a second. But what what happens here is that when 
this on message function re uh, receives messages from the game engine and one of the messages that that could arrive is the contact point response message that come from the physics engine and what that means is that the physics engine has detected a collision between uh, between uh, collision objects and we can react to that. So what we do here is we, we check that if the message group is geometry, then we handle geometry contacts and then some information about this, this collision. And so we broke this into a separate function here, uh, just for convenience. And what this does is, is it does some, some vector, vector mathematics to actually separate the, the two um, the two colliding shapes, so we 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 uh, they they will never penetrate. Uh, and when we have this in place, we have the collision object. We have the script that deals with collision. We have this um, here game object, and we put everything together in the level collection here. Uh, this is the here game object, and this is the ground. We can run this and suddenly we have collision. I have uh, actually turned on physics uh, debugging here. So you can see here that, that where the collision actually happens and we, we can see that it, it works pretty well. Uh, if I turn off, let's see here, if I turn off the, the project settings, I can turn off the debugging. And then let's rerun. This is how it looks right now. We also see that I'm, I'm able to jump here with this character and that is because I have set up uh, input also for uh, for uh, this hero character. So if you look at the hero script again, you see that in the beginning here, in the init, we acquire input focus. That means that we are going to listen to all the input that comes from the game. Uh, and all the inputs are set up in the input binaries. We have here, for example, a key trigger that says jump here. And that's currently bound to space. We could also bind things to touch trigger, for example, and react to touch input. I think that's actually done here. We get all the inputs in, into this script. And it arrives here on input. So if action ID is jump, or action ID is touch, actually we, uh, we listen to touch input here, then we jump. Or if we release, we abort jump. So we call these functions. Uh, and this is the jump function. It sets the velocity if we are on ground contact. Uh, and abort jump just uh, scales down the upward speed. So these things in, in conjunction creates, uh, uh, creates uh, the behavior that we want on this, on this main character. We should also note that this guy also has an update func function that uh, calculates the gravity it, uh, and also applies the velocity and sets the position of the character depending on the velocity and so forth and also uh, keeps track of, of ground contact and also a correction uh, vector that we, we that are used for to, to, to separate objects so the actual, so this is just the thing that that makes the the, the frog drop down all the time when you when you or jump up because we alter the velocity when we press the jump button. And then the handle geometry contact will actually separate the objects and that, that is done. So it somewhere here it does yeah here set position so it, it calculates what the new position should be depending on how the collision looks.